Welcome to this edition of Florida Peels Journal. I'm Jennifer Carroll, and we're going to talk about something I think very significant, and I'm sure you'll agree. Last year, 2020, we had discussed in one of our uh, presentations the Wilson Art v. Lopez case, 50 CA. I don't know if you remember that, but that was uh, involving a question of really the summary judgment standard but in the context of uh, the technology we're dealing with today with video, et cetera. Well, in December of 2020, the Florida Supreme Court, lo and behold, resolved the issue. And they resolved it by amending the summary judgment rule in Florida. So Florida now follows the federal standard. I think that's earth shattering news. So let's let's look at the opinion because we've got the the wilson art opinion and the accompanying opinion detailing the rationale for the standard change here in florida okay now wilson art and that's uh, supreme court 19-1336 came out december 31st 2020 mandate issued on uh january 21 uh 21 this year so you recall the original question that was certified and this is where we left off last year was as follows should there be an exception to the present summary judgment standards that are applied by state courts in florida that would allow for the entry of final summary judgment in favor of the moving party when the movement's video evidence completely negates or refutes any conflicting evidence presented by the non-moving party in opposition to the summary judgment motion. And there is no evidence or suggestion that the videotape evidence has been altered or doctored. And that was the question that was presented to the Supreme Court in the Wilson Art case. But what the Supreme Court did is they, they accepted jurisdiction, but then they asked the court, the, the parties to brief another question uh, that they wanted to, I guess to to address and this was the case to do it that question was should florida adopt the summary judgment standard articulated by the united states supreme court in the celotex case as well as anderson uh matashita uh and if so must florida rule of civil procedure 1.510 be amended to reflect any change in the summary standard. Earth shattering, no question about it. So what they did in Lopez, they answered the first certified question originally presented to them, no. The reason being, they didn't want to address it on the eve of a rule change that they were making simultaneously with uh, the issuance of this opinion. They and, and let me read you their, their conclusion uh, there. We, we answer no to the certified question and approve the result in the Fifth District Court of Appeal. Our decision is without prejudice to the petitioner's ability to seek summary judgment under Florida's new summary judgment standard once our rule amendment takes effect which it's going to take effect in May of uh, this year, 2021. So I would refer you to uh, in Ray amendments to Florida Rule of Civil Procedure 1.510 uh, at number SC 20-1490, uh, December 31st, 2020. And that's uh, the opinion regarding uh, the new rule. And it is to be effective on May 1st, 2021 of this year. And realize, of course, uh, the court is uh, asking for uh, input, I think, within 60 days. So I want to say it was by March um, uh, 1st, if I'm not mistaken, where uh, interested parties, members of the public can uh, provide their input. Uh, it, it, it would be March um Second, yes, March 2nd. All comments must be filed with the court on or before March 2nd, 2021. And you can make a separate request for oral argument uh, on that. Uh, so let's, uh, very interesting. That's where you get the meat of the um, opinion and rationale, of course, is in this uh, 
this opinion regarding the rule change. And what the court did, um, by the way, uh, Labarga La dissented in the case, and, and we'll go over that, but everybody else was in agreement. So in their opinion, when they made the rule change, uh, the court on its own motion amends Florida Rule of Civil Procedure 1.510, summary judgment rule. And they're basically, you know, there's Silatex 477 U.S. 317, that's U.S. Supreme Court 1986. And then the Anderson case, 477 U.S. 242, uh, 1986. And then the uh, Matsushita Electric Industrial Covey Zenith Radio Corp. Uh, again, 86, 475 U.S. 574. And we'll go ahead and put these up too on the site. But they use those three cases uh, together as the, quote, federal summary judgment standard. So with this amendment that they just made, uh, they are aligning, the court is aligning itself with, I think it's about 38 states now that follow the federal standard for summary judgment. So the uh, court refers to it as a, as a super majority of the states and now Florida is joining those states. Um, so when they when they analyzed it, they looked at uh, the Florida Rule of Civil Procedure uh, and they looked at the Federal Rule of Civil Procedure 56 sub A. And they thought, well, the texts of both rules are pretty similar, quote, materially indistinguishable. And in Florida's rule, uh, summary judgment uh, is required where the record shows, quote, that there is no genuine issue we all know this language, as to any material fact, and that the moving party is entitled to judgment as a matter of law. Federal Rule of Civil Procedure 56A requires summary judgment, quote, if the movement shows that there is no genuine dispute as to any material fact and the movement is entitled to judgment as a matter of law. But the our Florida Supreme Court recognized that this is consistent, but there it ends. The Florida and the federal courts have not been aligned um, in their summary judgment jurisprudence. And they talk about three differences that stand out. And the first, uh, they recognize that the Florida courts have declined to recognize, this is interesting, the similarity between a motion for directed verdict and a motion for summary judgment. And the U.S. Supreme Court has held that the federal summary judgment standard mirrors the standard for a DB, a directed verdict. Uh, so uh, the Supreme Court concluded that the inquiry under each is the same, whether the evidence presents a sufficient disagreement to require submission to a jury or whether it is so one-sided that one party must prevail as a matter of law. And uh, this, uh, uh, I believe they are citing to, uh, uh, th that should be the, the Celotex standard for summary judgment that they're referring to. Then they talk about the second big difference. As so you got directed verdict standard versus summary judgment. And so Florida has had, uh, really pretty liberal standard for summary judgment. It's like if there's any issue, any genuine issue of material fact. So second, they they cite to Hull v. Talcott, and the court recognizes that Florida courts have required the moving party conclusively, quote, to disprove the non-movement's theory of the case in order to eliminate any issue of fact. And then by contrast, in Silatex, the U.S. Supreme Court has held that there is, quote, no express or implied requirement in Rule 56 that the moving party support its motion with affidavits or other similar materials negating the opponent's claim. Very important to get to these fine lines uh, distinguishing standards because we're all going to have to operate with that uh, now in view of this new decision. So, the Supreme Court, U.S. Supreme Court explained that, quote, the burden on the moving party may be discharged by showing, that is, pointing out to the district court, that there is an absence of evidence to support the non-moving party's case. 
So upon motion and provided there's been, quote, an adequate time for discovery, the U.S. Supreme Court has held that the summary judgment should be entered, quote, against a party who fails to make a showing sufficient to establish the existence of an essential element of that party's case and on which that party will bear the burden of proof at trial. So, in other words, under the federal summary judgment standard, quote, the extent of the moving party's burden varies depending on who bears the burden of persuasion at trial. All right, and then our Florida Supreme Court saw a third distinction and recognized Florida courts have adopted an expansive understanding, so what I was saying earlier, of what constitutes a genuine, i.e. triable, issue of material fact. Um, quote, the existence of any competent evidence creating an issue of fact, however credible or incredible, substantial or trivial, stops the inquiry and precludes summary judgment so long as the slightest doubt is raised. So, I, I don't know. I think there you've got a mixture of uh, some cases in Florida. I think the way the standard has been interpreted uh, varies in some courts, uh, interpret it uh, more liberal, I, say, I think, than others. But th this is what the Supreme Court states in its recent uh, opinion amending the rule. And by contrast, they contrast the, the federal case law that, that we've cited. Uh, the Supreme Court has described the federal test as whether, quote, the evidence is such that a reasonable jury could return a verdict for the non-moving party, cites the Anderson, the U.S. Supreme Court case. Fascinating standards. Um, so they concluded, uh, the Supreme Court justices concluded, quote, we are persuaded that the federal summary judgment standard better comports with the text and purpose of Rule 1.510 and that adopting that standard is in the best interest of our state. As we said at the outset, our rules of civil procedure are meant, quote, to secure the just, speedy, and inexpensive determination of every action. Florida Rule of Civil Procedure 1.010. Yet Florida court's interpretation of our summary judgment rule has unnecessarily failed to contribute to that objective. Overall, and especially as to each of the key areas described above, the federal summary judgment standard is more rational, more fair, and more consistent with the structure and purpose of our rules of civil procedure. And there you have it. But there's always a caveat, right? Uh, the court further explained that in adopting this amendment, quote, we reaffirm the bedrock principle that summary judgment is not a substitute for the trial of disputed fact issues. That's very important considering this uh, stricter standard that the court now wants to impose. As the U.S. Supreme Court itself has emphasized, says the Florida Supreme Court, the summary judgment rule must be implemented, quote, with due regard for the rights of persons asserting claims and defenses that are adequately, adequately, based in fact to have those claims and defenses tried to a jury. Again, quoting from the U.S. Supreme Court. Our goals are simply to improve the fairness and efficiency of Florida's civil, civil justice system, to relieve parties from the expense and burdens of meritless litigation, and to save the work of juries for cases where there are real factual disputes that need resolution. That makes sense. So uh, to allow an opportunity for public comments, this uh, amendment will not take effect until May 1st, 2021. And as I said, interested persons will have 60 days from the date of this opinion, date of the opinion, December 31st, 2020, uh, within which to uh, file comments with the court. And uh, they attach, I believe it's to um, their opinion, of course, page 11, uh, the new summary judgment standard. And it's rule 1.510 summary judgment, A through B, no change, C, quote, most of the the rule, um, but they say, 
the, the, the judgment sought must be rendered immediately if the pleadings and summary judgment evidence on file show that there is no genuine, used to say issue, they changed that to dispute, so no genuine dispute as to any material fact and that the moving party is entitled to a judgment as a matter of law. Then they state, and this is new, the summary judgment standard provided for in this rule shall be construed and applied in accordance with the federal summary judgment standard articulated in the trio of U.S. Supreme Court cases that we mentioned, Celotex, Anderson, and the Matsushita case. Uh, so, uh, but again, of course, you need to read the opinion uh, for the real meaning of the federal summary judgment standard in the Florida courts. Now, I thought uh, you need to be aware that uh, Justice LaBarga dissented um, with an opinion, of course, of course, well-reasoned opinion. And it, his, his uh, statements in his dissent uh, certainly uh, bear repeating and, and bear our consideration. Quote, fully recognizing the imperative that Florida state courts operate efficiently, I nonetheless dissent to today's decision, which infringes upon the role of the jury in deciding disputes in civil cases. Mm. Uh, quote, for decades, Florida courts have been judicious in granting summary judgment because as observed by one of our district courts, quote, a motion for summary judgment is not a substitute for a trial on the merits. That's a very big, uh, a very big issue to Judge LaBarga. And, and one could argue that that still remains very significant, of course, even under the majority opinion. But apparently um, uh, Judge LaBarga is, is thinking the opinion's going too far. Uh, and, and really what... It, he feels under the more relaxed federal interpretation or when he says, quote, when the more relaxed federal interpretation is applied to a motion for summary judgment, the trial court's analysis goes far beyond evaluating whether an issue of material fact is in dispute. Instead, the trial court assumes a role traditionally reserved for a jury and engages in weighing evidence. Quote, I emphasize that it is not the dispute of any fact that precludes summary judgment, but the dispute of a genuine issue of material fact. Thus, the issue of fact must be of such import that it is dispositive of the litigant's claim. Far from being an innocuous requirement, this language sets a much higher bar than what the majority describes as, quote, some metaphysical doubt as to the material facts, cites to page four of the opinion. And quote Labar, Justice Labarga, because I believe that today's decision infringes upon the jury's sacred role, I respectfully dissent. So definitely uh, an outstanding dissent and, and, and really uh, an excellent opinion too. So if certainly if anyone uh, has input, you've got time to go ahead and give your input uh, to the Florida Supreme Court with respect to this prospective rule change. Uh, but remember on the, the question that was originally certified in the Lopez case, which we discussed uh, a few months ago in 2020, and they answered no and they upheld the fifth district's decision. Uh, so again, any questions as usual, let us know. We'll be putting the sites up uh, on our site here on the Appeals Journal. Again, uh, I hope you find this information helpful. I think it's fascinating. Big change, big change uh, in Florida law. And now you are aware of, of that change and the rationale behind it. Uh, we look forward to talking to you next time. And as usual, any questions, by all means, please let us know. Thank you again. Hi, I'm Jennifer Carroll, and I want to thank you for watching our video. You can see more of our videos right here. Uh, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below so you won't miss a single one.